Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Ghost and today we're going to be going over commanders and commander builds that I run on all of my ships and whatnot. Okay, we're going to be just going over commanders in this game. So a lot of people, you know, when they make a YouTube video, it's all about a ship, right? A specific ship, usually, usually, or a topic of ships. But nobody really goes super in depth into the commander builds and why they run them and all that stuff. We're also going to talk about how you can get some of these commanders because I might be running some commanders. Might. I don't actually know if I have any on right now, but I might be running some commanders that are like a unique commander that you can only get within like an event or something like that. So. Yeah, we're also going to be talking about how you can get how you can get regular commanders and all that jazz. So overall, this video is about commanders today. Commanders are a vital thing in this game. Okay, commanders are a very important thing in this game. Uh, you want to be trying to get as much commander XP, insignias, and commendations, and all that stuff, so you can get those commanders upgraded. And you know, the higher level commander you have the more benefits your ship is going to receive over time, right? That's the whole idea uh, behind commanders. You need to get them upgraded so you can make your ships better, right? Now, I'm just going to go over all of the commanders that I run currently on my ships as of now, okay? This goes for every nation. And then I'm going to, uh, you know, obviously go over the commander and then why I run it and then all that jazz. And then we'll talk about some commanders you guys can get. Uh, how to get them and all that stuff. So first off, the American destroyers. Now it depends. Uh, right now, uh, for example, for my Somers here, I am running a torpedo boat, uh, torpedo commander. Okay, uh, the Somers is a torpedo boat, right? So I'm running. Uh, it says Vic Rattlehead. I'm running a commander guys. It is a cosmetic item. If you ca in case you guys aren't aware what a commander guys is. Uh, it's a cosmetic item, but really, if I take that off, I'm running uh, Albert Gleaves. He is a free commander. Most of the commanders that I put on my ships are just free commanders. But yeah, I'm running Albert Gleaves, okay? I just have a commander guys over it, so you can't really see him. But um, yeah, so Albert Gleaves, what he does is he gives your, uh, your American destroyers the ability to have more out of their torpedo cap uh, capabilities, okay? So from afar... His base trait here. Uh, this is his. Uh, this is a base trait. What a base trait is is something you can apply to any ship in the game. So, like for example, if I want his base trait on a different type of ship. So, for example, if I want if I want to run a torpedo range build on my Japanese uh, destroyers, well, I can put him as an inspiration, right? So, if I go over to my Rizo Tanaka here. Uh, I can put him as an inspiration, uh, my uh, American torpedo boat guy, Albert Gleaves. And look at I get his base trait as an inspiration, so I get that bonus. That's kind of, You can play around with your inspirations as well. Apply other commanders to your commander, if that makes any sense. Play around with it. You guys can come up with some fun builds. But uh, my Somers here, where did it go? I got too many American tier 7s. Here we go. Uh, yeah, but my Somers, speaking of base traits, on my Somers commander here, uh, on my Torpedo Focus, uh, Torpedo Focus Albert Gleaves commander, I'm running Reginald Tierwit. Reginald Tierwit gives me extra torpedo capabilities, aka reload, and uh, he basically decreases my chance of getting my steering knocked out and stuff like that. Also, I'm running Eric Bay. What Eric Bay does as an inspiration is he provides me extra concealment. Destroyer detectability minus 3.8%. Now, if you get these commanders upgraded, you can get their base traits even higher level. Like my base trait, for example, from afar is only uh, level uh, three. So if you get if you get the commander fully maxed out, this base trait can get to level 20. Uh, mastery 19 out of 20. So yeah, you can even get more value out of your base traits and everything else along with that. Now for the skills, I'm running Subsurface Venture. This obviously just gives me more for my torpedoes, and it decreases my reload, and it and it increases my torpedo speed. The only downside is it makes my destroyer's guns reload longer. So you have to basically, if you're in a gunfight, you're going to be reloading a lot slower. I'm running Look at Me Now. This gives me extra concealment. Pretty important as a uh, de uh, destroyer these days. You need as much concealment as you can get. I'm running Torpedo Safari. This is pretty important because it increases the torpedo range. I'm running Destroy or Be Destroyed. This makes me go quicker, essentially. And I'm running Give Me Speed. Okay. So, yeah, this is my usual torpedo boat 
commander that I run on American torpedo boats. There aren't many of them, but the ones that I do have, like Somers, for example, I do run a torpedo commander on it. Now, moving on to my gunboat commander. I run... This is actually one of the... Uh, this is actually a event commander. This is a premium commander, as I like to call it. Uh, you could only get it in an event. So you can't get it anywhere else. I had to either buy this or get it out of a crate. I actually got it out of a crate. So this is a unique commander, only exclusive during an event. This was, a, I believe, a Halloween event commander. So you can't get him anymore, unfortunately, but he is a great gunboat commander because he increases my main battery reload time, his base trait here, waste not, destroy, destroy our main battery reload minus 6%. I'm running observant range, destroy our main battery reload minus 5%, and then I get an additional 12% torpedo detectability range, so I can see incoming torpedoes a lot easier. I'm running look at me now, pretty important. I'm running perceptive. This allows me to see the closest enemy ship to me. Uh, this is basically twist and track, aka RPF radio position finder uh, this is a great skill to have so you can basically have a little ring in the center of your screen that shows you the closest enemy ship to you right you could also run twist and track you can also run a thousand cuts there's other things you can run you can play around with your builds but i need to run perceptive i need to know where the closest ship is pretty important stuff and I'm running sheltered arms here as well. Uh, risk, uh, risk of main battery becoming incapacitated, basically minus 100%. So my guns never get knocked out. My torpedoes never get knocked out. They can still get destroyed, but my guns will never get knocked out, which is amazing. And finally, we are running Unstoppable. I've actually converted over to Unstoppable recently. I used to run Leviathan, but now I'm just like, yeah, I, I need, I need the extra, uh, the I need the ability to basically repair my engine and and everything or at least be able to sub like actually maneuver even though i have my rudder knocked out it's really important stuff i always end up getting my rudder knocked i'm like you know what i'm getting tired of this i'm putting this on for my inspirations i'm running william sims he increases my hp per tier plus 400 percent or 400 so i get an additional 400 if you do the math i'm not going to do it I, I i'm not very good at math but 400 times 7 do your math you guys can get an idea it's a tier 7 ship well, 400 times 7. Uh, and, of course, Eric Bay, uh, destroy detectability, minus 3.8%. I put him on almost all my destroyers. Eric Bay is a great inspiration to have. He is a good commander to put on as an inspiration. Now, there's another commander that you can run that is just as good. He, th basically, William Halsey. William Halsey is like the same commander. Literally, he is the same commander as, uh, as Vi uh, Vincent Mordoff. Okay, this is uh, Vincent Mordoff right here. Uh... It gets so confusing because it says Dave Mustaine, but it is Vincent Mordoff, the unique event commander that I was just showing you guys. But William Halsey has, like, the same skills as him. The only one he doesn't have is Sheltered Arms, okay? So, yeah, pretty interesting. Also, his base trait's different as well. But, yeah, I'm going to go back and put on Dave Mustaine. But, uh, anyway, or Vincent Mordoff. Now, moving on to my cruiser commander for my Americans. So, my cruiser commander that I run on almost pretty much all my cruisers is Norman Scott. He's a free-to-play commander again. All right? Uh, I use him. He's level 16, legendary 4. He's fully maxed out, just like my uh, Vincent Mordoff d destroyer gunboat commander. But, yeah, w Norman Scott is a great commander for American cruisers because he gives you more into your guns. He gives you extra range, extra fire chances, AP capabilities, accuracy, all the stuff. He's a great gun-focused commander build. Uh, commander. So, really important. Uh, Americans are all about the guns. They're, that's what they're all about. That's what they're so special for. So, I try to get as much out of my guns as humanly possible. At least the ships that do have good guns. Except, like, for example, the Somers is more of a torpedo boat-focused destroyer. But it can use its guns as well. But I still want to use more into the torpedoes. That's what it's, like, great for. But, yeah. Beyond range, this is a really nice thing here. It increases my cruiser main battery range. Obviously, igniter increases my fire chance, punch through, makes my AP better, fixated, more accuracy, and free full station decreases my reload. Now, sometimes I do put on fully packed. Sometimes I'll swap over to that. This gives me an extra consumable. So if I'm like playing a competitive match or trying to, you know, use a radar cruiser, for example, I put this on so I can get extra consumables. Like, for example, on my Baltimore here, I get three radars, three heals, and three sonars. But sometimes, if I just want to go full DPM mode, aka damage mode, I just want to deal damage. I don't really want to get too close. Then I'll put on refill station. I'll lose a, I'll lose uh, one consumable out of each, but I'll get better reload 
by about a second. So a second off my reload is pretty significant. So yeah, you can change around the build. Sometimes I'll even put on Burn It Down XXL. I'll sacrifice some range, and I'll like plop on fully packed. I'll switch it around, right? That's the whole idea. Switch around the commander builds. Now for the inspirations on my cruiser commander here for my Americans, I'm running Nikolai Kuznetsov. This guy gives me extra range, really nice. And Francesco Membelli. I put this guy on basically all of my cruisers in the game, almost all of them. Uh, this guy decreases the reload by about 4.95%. So really nice stuff there indeed. Now, finally, for the Americans, my battleship commander. This is mainly the commander. I have two that I use, but yeah, this is the one I use for my gun build. So if I'm trying to get accuracy, if I want more out of my guns, I run William Sims. Once again, he is a free-to-play commander. You can get him out of commander crates. We'll talk about how you can get commander crates later, but for now, yeah, this is, uh, this is my main guy. So his base trait is built to last HP per tier plus 400. Uh, we were running him, remember, we are running William Sims as an inspiration on our American gunboats, remember that? But anyway, uh, we are running Flammable Cannoneer. This guy increases our main battery range and, uh, increases our reload, or not our reload, but our shell grouping, so he makes us more accurate. But in a, there's a little bit of a double-edged sword here. It also increases our chance of getting set on fire. I, I get set on fire no matter what, so I really could care less. Gyrating Drill Bits, this guy... Uh, this this uh, skill right here makes our battleship guns turn better, and it increases our uh, main ba uh, main battery AP shell damage on our battleships as well, plus 10%. So really nice stuff indeed. The only downside is it decreases our battleship speed, which is fine. I don't really care. Uh, and marksmanship, I'm running this because, well, it decreases my main battery dispersion, minus 10%. But the only downside is, once again, it, it uh, there's a sacrifice there. It increases our rudder shift, plus 5%. And uh, we're running also reaching out to XXL. This increases our range. Finally, we're running World Rebuild. Okay, just a nice skill to have. I can get next to an ally and heal up. Pretty simple. Okay, y'all can put your uh, your comments below and say, Ghost, run fight fire with fire. No, absolutely not. Okay, I get set on fire no matter the fuck what. So y'all can y'all can argue with me all you want in the comments. I, I could give a shit less. Not running fight fire with fire. I burn no matter what. I burn equally, okay? Literally, I ran fight fire with fire for about a month, and I was like, yeah, no, fuck this shit. I get I get set on fire regardless, okay? So fuck that. Uh built to last, I think we already covered that. Now we're running auto ciliax as an inspiration and we're running Andrew Cunningham as an inspiration, okay? I'm gonna try to go through I'm gonna try to go through these a little bit quicker because this is going on for long enough. But you guys can get the idea. Okay, I'm just gonna start reading these off. And, uh, yeah, I want to speed up this process a little bit. Now, there's some commanders that I do run differently, like my brawler commander for my Americans. I have on my Massachusetts, right? Massachusetts is a great brawling commander, or it's a br great bra brawling ship, so I want a brawler commander. He also gives me extra secondary capabilities. So, inspirations. Franz von Hipper increases my secondaries. Justinian Lyons makes our fire chance go up when we activate a heal. Pretty nice stuff. Our base trait, don't let it spill. We're running Brawler, Porcupine, fight fire, uh, Firefighter, we're running Master Mechanic, and Wilder Rebuild. Okay, this guy all around gives us better brawling capabilities, he gives us better secondary capabilities, anti-fire capabilities. He's a, he's a great tanky brawling commander, okay? That's why I run him on my American uh, brawler ships, like Massachusetts, for example. Now, for my carriers, there's only really one option, it's Ernst King. Ernst King... He is the main guy here. Once again, a free-to-play commander, just like Willis Lee. I forgot to mention, that was Willis Lee we're running. Uh, I, I didn't even bother naming him yet. Willis Lee, once again, a free commander, uh, my brawler commander that I run. But also, carrier commander, you guys can get him out of a crate. Every week, you can get a free crate. We'll talk about that later, but Ernst King here. We're running Deng Shushang as inspiration, and we're running Rise of Tanaka as an inspiration. Our base trait is I Come Prepared. We're running Swatting at Flies, Emergency Power, Hidden Threat, ba uh, Burn Baby Burn, and Fully Packed. Okay, pretty simple stuff here. Com carriers are pretty self-explanatory. I did just do a uh, carrier video not too long ago. Now moving on to the Japanese, okay? So we're going to move on to the Japanese. Uh, so for the Japanese torpedo boat focused destroyers, do pardon my pings, you guys here. My phone is absolutely blowing up. I'm just going to real quick put that on Do Not Disturb because that shit is getting annoying. For you guys, I, I, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, for my Japanese torpedo boats, so Fubuki, for example, I'm running Raizo Tanaka. Okay, Raizo Tanaka is a great torpedo boat-focused destroyer. 
uh, commander. Just like uh, j you guys remember my American destroyer, uh, torpedo destroyer boat, the Somers. Remember the commander I ran, Albert Gleaves. Yeah, Albert Gleaves is basically like Rizo Tanaka for the Americans. Okay, so yeah, inspirations. I'm running Eric Bay and Reginald Tierwit. I'm running Hull Crusher, Subsurface Venture. Look at me now, Torpedo Safari, Destroyer Be Destroyed, and Unstoppable. Okay, really good commander. All around, he gives me more, he gives me more torpedo capabilities. Okay, so pretty self-explanatory stuff. A lot of these commanders are kind of the same. Like every nation has their own like little gimmicks, kinda, and every nation has their own. Basically, every nation has around the same commander uh, abilities as other nations do. Okay, same skills and stuff. So you're gonna be seeing a lot of the same skills over and over again. Um, all right. But you guys can run whatever you want. You guys are probably going to have different builds than me, and that is perfectly okay. I want to remind you guys: you guys can run whatever builds you want. Okay, whatever works, whatever works for you works for you. This is just my stuff. I run. Okay, this is just what I run. This is what I prefer. So keep that in mind. Now for my Japanese cruisers. Uh, right now I'm running a Haguro, but usually I'm gonna I'm actually gonna take that off. I think that's an old commander I was running. Like for example, on my higher tiers that I actually do play, like my like my uh, my Azuma, for some reason I still have it on Suzuki. I haven't played it in a while, but I, I mainly run Isoroku Yamamoto, so I don't want to mislead you guys there. Uh, I mainly run Isoroku Yamamoto. He's also a free-to-play commander, just like Raizo Tanaka, just like William Sims. All those guys are free-to-play commanders, okay? So yeah, Isoroku Yamamoto, I'm running Francesco Mandelli, and I'm running Haguro as inspirations. Now, Haguro is an Azerlane commander. You can only get her from the Azerlane Wave 4 event. So she was she's one of those commanders you either have to buy or get out of one of those crates, uh, Azerlane crates. So yeah, um, pretty good stuff here. For the base trait, we're running right through. Now, if you guys are not aware, Isoraku Yamamoto is basically the gun-focused commander for the Japanese. Just like uh, Norman Scott for the Americans, this is basically the Norman Scott for the Japanese, okay? If you guys want to get your idea. But this guy literally has the same exact skills as uh, as uh, Norman Scott, okay? Literally the same skills. So we're running beyond range, gives us extra range, igniter gives us extra fire chance, punch through gives us better, better AP capabilities, fixated gives us better accuracy, and refill station gives us better reload right so pretty self-explanatory stuff you guys are going to be seeing the same sort of trend and now for the japanese battleships so for example like on my musashi i run takio takagi takio takagi is like the william sims of the japanese he's a gun focused uh commander for battleships for the japanese so i like to run this guy uh now we're running for our base traits andrew cunningham and paulo de revel cunningham increases our accuracy or shell grouping and Apollo to Revel increases our main battery reload. So I do run a little bit of different inspirations depending on the ships I play. Uh, depends. Uh, base trait, we're running Phoenix. Total HP restored by Repair Party. Uh, we're running Flamble Cannoneer. Gyrating Drill Bits. Marksmanship. Reaching out XXL and Wilder Build. Basically the same build I run on my American Accuracy Commanders. Okay? Literally the same build. Uh, now for my Japanese Carriers. Same deal. I, I shouldn't even go into it, but I am. Tamin Yamaguchi. He's a free-to-play commander, once again, and you can basically get the idea. I'm running mostly the same uh, the same exact stuff here, okay? Now, moving on to the British. Same sort of deal. Uh, we're running uh, for my British destroyers. Oops, I went past it. I'm actually just going to Tier 5 here. So, for my British destroyers, I'm running Reginald Tierwit. Reginald Tierwit is a torpedo-ish focused commander, Okay. I'm running Genichi Mikawa. I think this is my fat destroyer build. I didn't realize I need to take him off and put on my... Um, I need to go back and put on... Where is he at? Germans. They're to the right. I think I went past him. I need to put back on Eric Bay because that was not the right thing. I think I was running a Minotaur build. I forgot to take it off. But no, we're running a Eric Bay and Jersey Source Case Inspirations. A double concealment build here just because why not. Uh, True Grit... We've got subsurface venture. Look at me now. Torpedo safari, smoke on the water, and smogathon. Okay, this gives me extra smoke screens and it and, uh, decreases our reload time for our smoke screens. So really nice stuff. Overall, yeah, good commander, good torpedo commander for the British. Really good. So once again, free to play commander. You guys can get them out of commander crates. Moving on to the British cruisers. Uh, I run. Um, I run. What's his name? I forgot his name now. Oh, Bruce Fraser. So Bruce Fraser, uh, he is a free-to-play commander. He is basically the Norman Scott of the British. 
Uh, he gets one unique thing, though. He gets home run. He gets an extra ability here. Torpedo range, plus 10%. So this guy, I can actually get some more torpedo capabilities. But anyway, before we get into that, let's take a look at the inspirations. I'm running Augustin Rigerwald and Francesco Mambelli. Francesco Mambelli, pretty important because he increases our, our main battery reload once again. So he's, he's a commander I put on a lot of cruisers. Cruiser commanders across the whole uh, game here. We're running Make Haste. We're running Beyond Range. Home Run instead. Usually I play British light cruisers. Most of the British light cruisers don't have HE, so Igniter obviously is not going to be that helpful, but sometimes I do put that on. I swap between these two usually, but for now we're running Home Run. Uh, we're running Punch Through, Fixated, and Fully Packed. Sometimes I put on Refill Station, sometimes I take it off, put on Fully Packed, right? Just like Norman Scott, same sort of deal here. A lot of the ships kind of play the same. A lot of the ships you're going to be using your guns and you're going to be usually playing the same sort of way as every other nation okay a lot of these cruisers are sort of the same way but it depends right now for let's say for example if i wanted to run a different build if i wanted to run an agile build well then i would go find the agile build commander for example william Tennant. he is the uh, he's the azure uh, he's the uh the agility build commander so i can basically run him and i can put on like velocious to get extra speed Put on full ahead, give me extra speed and rudder and all the stuff, right? So if I wanted to switch it up, I could of course run that. But I'm not, I don't usually care about Azure builds. I want to get most out of my guns, right? That's the whole idea. So that's why I run them. Now moving on to the British battleships. Once again, I run a free-to-play commander, Andrew Cunningham. Great British commander here. He's basically the William Sims, once again, of the British. Same sort of deal. Flammable Cannoneer, Gyrating Drill Bits, Marksmanship, Reaching Out, and Wheel to Rebuild. We're running Paulo de Revel and John Arthur Arth R but not Fisher. We're just going to call him Fisher because that is one hell of a middle name right there. Jackie Fisher. Jesus. But yeah, uh, this guy's a pretty good commander inspiration as well because he increases our main battery reload and range. Or decreases the reload and increases the range. So really nice stuff here. Um... Flammable Cannoneer, Gyrating Drill Bits. Yeah, I think we already went into that. But yeah, basically same sort of deal. And the base trait, Concentrated Devastation. So uh, pretty nice, pretty good commander all around. And now for the uh, British Carriers. So once again, same deal. Not even going to get into it. But yeah, same sort of deal as all my other commanders uh, for my Carriers, okay? Now moving on to the Germans. Moving on to the Germans here. So... The Torpedo Boat Focused Destroyer Commander I run, for example, on my T-61, Maximilian Von Spee, once again a free-to-play commander, running Eric Bay and Reginald Tierwitt as inspirations, base trait is Misty Morning, Subsurface Venture, look at me now, Torpedo Safari on Sunset, this is a unique uh, ability for the German commanders, uh, He basically what this does is it decreases our Torpedo Detectability minus 100 meters, and it decreases our Destroyer Detectability minus 2%. And finally, we're running Unstoppable. So same sort of deal. Lots of the same skills you're seeing across the whole board here. Uh, really nothing much is changing. And if I want to run, for example, a gunboat build, I run Eric Bay, usually. Uh, Inspirations, William Sims and Vincent Mordoff. Uh, Shifty, we've got Observant Range. We've got Look at Me Now, Perceptive, uh, Smoke on the Water, and Unstoppable. So this is the sort of gun utility focus commander that I like to run. Okay, so pretty nice. Pretty nice indeed. Now for the cruisers, same sort of deal. Uh, this is the cruiser focus commander for the guns. Uh, beyond range, igniter, punch through, fixated, same skills, right? You're seeing a lot of these same skills pop up across the whole board in the game. Uh, emergency bell, this is a unique one for the Germans. Once again, uh, your cruiser time uh, to reach engine full power is eight minus 8% and your cruiser time for rudder shift minus 8%. So rudder, Engine power, better, right? For agility, if you want to run that. But usually I don't care. I try to get more out of my guns. I could care less about turning slightly faster. Okay, that's just me. Uh, and for the German battleships, this depends. A lot of these German battleships are good brawlers. But if I want to run a gun-focused build, I usually run Franz von Hipper. Uh, or I put on... Um, or sometimes I'll put on uh, John Luke Pickup. He's good for spotters, but some of these Germans don't have spotter planes, so I just keep on Franz von Hipper. But John Luke Pickup is one of those unique commanders that was locked behind an event. You can't get him anymore, but you never know. You might see him again pop up in the store if you do want to buy him. He's a premium sort of commander. But Franz von Hipper does the job just fine. He really does. He's a good commander for accuracy and guns and whatnot, okay? One thing, too, 
His, his um, base rate's really nice, increases our secondary range and our secondary battery accuracy. Overall, really good commander for the Germans, especially if you're running a gun-focused build, okay? But if you want to run, for example, a brawler build, I put on Autosiliacs on my, some of my brawler German battleships, like Brandenburg, for example. Autosiliacs is like the Willis Lee of the... Uh, of the of the Germans every com every nation has one. He's once again a free-to-play commander Brawler porcupine all the things right this guy though gets a unique ability uh, that other nations don't advance schemes ship secondary battery shell damage Plus five percent and chances of secondary is causing a fire plus two and a half percent. So really nice stuff and Overall really good commander if you're wanting to run a brawler build for your Germans Which a lot of you are running brawler builds on your German ships a lot of you guys want to get Accuracy out of your secondaries and and whatnot and and having better brawler capabilities overall So he's a good commander for that and uh, That's about it for the cruisers, right? Really a lot of these cruisers like Carl von Moeller for example same sort of deal for the cruisers He's basically the Willie, uh, the the Norman Scott of the Germans. He's a good gun-focused cruiser commander for the Germans. But if you do want to run an agile build or whatever, Gun Solutions is a good option as well. He also gives you more capabilities into your sonar. So if you want to get more out of that dirty, dirty German sonar, you can put on acoustic chamber and you can put on all this stuff as well. But Carl von Moeller does the job just fine. Once again, same deal. All right, same deal for all these nations. Okay. I'm really not, I'm actually not even going to get into it anymore. I think that's really about all I need to cover. Uh, really, I'm running the same sort of builds on a lot of these nations. I will cover, though, a few unique commanders that uh, that really are different. So I guess I actually will keep going with this. So, for example, the French. You know what? Yeah, let's just keep going. So Louis Villette, this guy's a little bit different. Uh, he does have some unique stuff, like sidestep and rather be torching. Uh, this guy does get two different skills that no other nations get, I don't think. Uh, but I really never use them except sidestep. Sidestep is pretty good. But it increases our range and dispersion and all that. And overall, quick fix as well. Pretty nice. This guy's a good gun-focused commander. He's a good gun build commander. So I do like to run, in, run him on some of, my tor uh, some of my gun builds for my French destroyers. But if I want to switch it up and run a torpedo build, then I put on Felipe Oboyano. He's a good commander because he allows me to get more out of my... Uh, oops. Did I just... What the hell did just happen there? Okay, anyway, go back. Uh, this guy's a good torpedo boat, uh, torpedo boat focused destroyer commander as well. Overall, pretty good. So, now a unique commander that I run on basically all of my uh, all of my uh, French ships is D Azerline Dunkirk. She's really good because uh, she gives me the ability to reload all of my guns instantly to a different shell. So, for example, if I have armor piercing loaded, I can basically instantly swap over to HE. If my guns are fully loaded. Really nice ability to have. She's a little different. She gets megalomania and uh, whatnot. So a little bit of a different commander. But she's really strong. She's a good hybrid build commander for Frenchies. So nice commander. Once again she was locked in Azerlane wave 1 or 2 I think. You can't get her anymore unless you buy her. When that Azerlane stuff comes around. So overall, like for example, Henri Lemonnier, once again, he's just same sort of deal here. I really don't even need to read into it. You guys should be seeing the trend by now. Uh, same thing with the, the Russians. This is the Mud Brawler Commander. Uh, there is also a commander you can run that's a non-brawler commander that gives you more into your guns, like this guy, for example. Oh no, that was actually the... Oops, I don't want to play a game. That actually was the gun commander. So this is the gun focus commander, Lev Galler. This is the brawler commander, Mik Mikhail Kedrov, that I run uh, for the cruisers. Uh, Nikolai Kuznetsov, this is the gun focused commander if you want more out of your guns. And if you want more out of your uh, your maneuverability, which I don't know why the hell you would want that in a, in a, in a Russian ship. There's like most of the Russian cruisers are very agile. But hey, you, can, you guys can run this guy as well, okay? And for the for the uh, destroyers, so Anton Gurin is a good ability or a good commander to run uh, for your guns. But I prefer to run Nick, uh, Vladimir Trebetskoy because Vladimir gives me the ability to set fires. So playing with fire, really nice. I can basically be a mini cruiser, and I can have a 16% chance of setting fire on a on a Russian destroyer. It's pretty funny. Uh, and of course the carrier, this yeah Elon Musk looking guy, pretty good. <laughs> So, once again, for the Italians, same sort of deal. Luigi Cincinnati. Uh, this guy also gets home run, like on the British cruiser commander I showed you guys earlier. 
really nice. He also gets an ability, su uh, Subtle Manipulations, uh, gives me more out of my SAP shells. So, pretty good commander to run. Obviously, they have an agile build commander too. Uh, like, for example, Francesco Mambelli. I prefer to run Luigi Cincinnati, uh, Luigi Cincinnati though, because he gives me more into my, uh, into my guns, right? The same sort of deal here, guys. I'm, I'm just, usually a lot of these commanders are just commanders I run on most of my stuff. Now, this guy's unique, Angelo Iaccino. Uh, he's the battleship accuracy gun build commander. This guy has unique abilities here. This guy has Iron Resolve. This is a unique thing for the Italians, and he also has Testudo. Uh, this is these are really these are two really cool skills. I actually do need to eventually go down the Italian line more, but uh, until then it's just gonna have to wait. But yeah, really good uh, commander I Angelo Iacchino, pretty nice. Obviously, too the torpedoes Luigi uh, Rizzo. This guy has a unique ability, Swordfish. Pretty self-explanatory. You guys could just read it yourselves, really, but I'll read it anyway. Destroyer main battery, SAP, and all that gets increased. Torpedo damage increased, engine boost increased, okay? Overall, a lot of these commanders are just pretty self-explanatory. You guys can go through and read them yourselves and just play around with your ships, right? For example, on my Friesland here, I run a gun build commander, Jersey Swirsky. This guy is pretty good for guns. Uh, but if I want a torpedo boat-focused commander, I run Stig Harrison or Hansen Ericsson. This guy's pretty good. Stig for torpedoes, right? So, overall, same same deal throughout these all these lines here, okay? A lot of these skills you guys are going to be seeing is, like, basically on almost every nation in the game. Uh, the same skills keep popping up. So, yeah. Now, let's go over to the store here and show you guys how you guys can buy some commanders. So, if you guys want to buy right now, there are some uh, some event commanders going on. I'm not going to go too deep into it. I already did make an Azure Lane Wave 5 video. But if you want to come in here and get some unique uh, pay-to-win kind of commanders, there are some in here that give you different skills, right? We already covered that in the Azure Lane video. If you guys want to watch that, go back on my channel and scroll back a few days. It should be there for you guys to watch, okay? But if you guys are wondering how to actually just get regular commanders, if you guys are wanting to know how to get regular commanders in this game, well, the best way to do it is by going over to your missions tab and heading in to your weekly boost. Okay, actually, no, I don't think it's that. Ignore me for a second. I gotta actually find it. Oh, it's right here. So your your uh, your premium supplies. That can't be. Surely you can get one for free too, right? Surely you're not just locked behind premium supplies. I believe there is a challenge, ladies and gentlemen, that does give you. Oh yeah, I I just completely missed it. Okay. Let's redo this again. So, in the missions, okay, there is a there is a challenge. I completely fucking missed it because I'm Dr. Ghost Games, ladies and gentlemen, and I am not perfect. Uh, the weekly boost. So every week, there is a set of challenges you guys can do right here. You get a commander crate on the weekly boost right here. Literally, week one. Uh, weekly boost number one. The first challenge, win a battle. The second challenge, earn 7,000 XP. So basically, just for playing the game, you will get a commander crate, okay? A commander crate has a chance of dropping any commander in the game, at least the free-to-play ones. So not like the Agilene ones, but regular commanders, okay? The ones that I showed you guys for most of my ships. Uh, those commander crates drop any of the commanders in the game. So it is a little bit of luck-based, but once you get that commander again, or once you get that commander, you can't roll it again. So if you just keep logging in every week, you will eventually get all the commanders in the game. There is also another way of getting commanders, though. If you if you have the XP, if you have the commander XP, you can actually come into the store and come into the commanders tab, and you can buy commanders, okay? So, for example, if I want... I do actually need to come in here and buy some anyway. I need to get my Andrew Cunningham leveled up more. So I'm going to buy some duplicate commendations for Andrew Cunningham, so I can exactly do that. There's one, and there's two. Boom. So now I got two duplicate commendations. I can go take a look at him. And I still need about five more commendations to get him legendary four. So yeah, you guys can come in here, spend commander XP two to get commanders. Okay. Also one thing to mention, there is a commander tab as well. So if you want to keep track of all of your commanders and your commander stuff and all of that, you can come over to the commander tab and look at each nation and you can basically scroll through. There is a, there is a filter as well, I think. Um, 
but I'm not going to use it right now. But there is a filter, I think. At least I'm not aware. But you can also hide the guises as well. So that is something you can do. I just realized they allow you to do that. So if you want to get rid of the commander guises, you just click the left trigger and you can do exactly that. See? But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, that's the commanders, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there's a lot of them. Like, there's some unique ones that I haven't even bothered getting fully upgraded yet. They're really good commanders. Like, Shelly Beepley is more of a utility-focused commander and, like, an agile build commander. Azure Lane, New Jersey is, like, a gunboat or a gun build for the American battleships and whatnot. There's some different gimmicks. Most of these guys, though, right here, you have to buy them. Okay, these are, you, these are locked behind events, and you have to buy them with real money for the most part. Um, but most of these actually I got for free. Like basically all these commanders in here I got for free. Uh, I, I actually got them out of like free crates that Wargaming gave out. So uh, yeah, overall pretty good. Now if you want to actually get a commander upgraded, so let's let's just do some testing. I'm going to spend some of my commander stuff on this lady. So let's say you get a cool commander out of a crate, right? You want to get a commander upgraded. So let's say, ooh, I got this Davis commander. Uh, Ar Ar Aria... That's a weird name. I'm just going to call her Davis. I'm going to stick to what I just said. Yeah, we're not even going to bother, but we're not even going to bother pronunciating that name. Um, but anyway, Miss Davis here, uh, you can get this commander upgraded. So you can get every commander upgraded in the game up to level 6 with 37,000 uh, commander XP. But what, what past level 6, you do need to start spending promotion orders. Promotion orders you can get in the game from doing various challenges. You can get promotion orders from the campaign aka the Admiralty backing, you can get promotion orders for free out of commander, uh, out of regular crates and out of all that stuff. So promotion orders you can just get throughout the game. If you look in the missions tab, you can get a lot of them. Now once you get up to level 14, okay, so once you spend 153 promotion orders, I'm actually not even going to buy it. I don't even want to blow my shit on this stuff. Not going to lie. I don't even want to spend any of my XP. But, uh, Basically, if you want to get past level 13, you start needing insignias. Insignias are hard as hell to get in this game. They don't give a lot of them out. So I have a, I have like no none of them. I've got 3,000 plus fucking promotion orders, but I have like no insignias. It's hilarious. But uh, yeah, <laughs> if you want to get your stuff past level, uh, past level 13, you have to start spending insignias. And obviously, for getting your commander legendary, you need personal commendations or you need universal commendations. If you want to get a personal commendation, basically, you need to get a duplicate commander of this commander here, okay? Or you have to get a, a universal commendation, and sometimes Wargaming gives out you, uh, universal commendations in, in challenges and in the campaigns and all that stuff, okay? And in missions, too. So overall... That is it, ladies and gentlemen. This video has gone on for quite a while, but that's what I'm all about here on the channel. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you all out. And uh, yeah, this is the commanders in World of Warships Legends. I guess that's what we will call uh, today's videos, just commanders. I don't know. I'll come up with a name, a title later. Um, but nonetheless, I hope you all did enjoy it. Okay, if you guys did enjoy the video in the slightest, be sure to go down there, help me out, and hit that subscribe button. We're getting closer and closer to our next milestone. We actually did just hit 3,600 subs. So thank you guys for that. You guys are awesome with the support. And uh, also, hit the like button as well if you guys did like the video. I do appreciate it. And uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you guys think. I do read most of my comments. So yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's commanders in World of Warships Legends. At least my commanders that I like to use. Obviously, I haven't covered every commander in the game. We would be here for hours, right? But you guys are more than welcome to have discussions in the comments and talk about your favorite commander builds. And some of you, like I said earlier, might have different commander builds than me, right? I'm going to run my own builds. I'm going to stick to what I like. You guys can stick to what you like. That's the beauty of having freedom of choice, ladies and gentlemen. So anyway, have a fantastic rest of your weekends. That's about it for me. Anyway, see ya. Peace out. Stay healthy as always.